I get it. You're sick of all these overpriced overland trailers. So am I. I challenge you to build out an off-road trailer from a budget camper manufacturer like Hiker or Runaway, companies I respect, known for industry low prices. Then compare their built-out budget overland trailers to the Boreas AT. Let's get into those pros and cons. Let's talk about bang for your buck. Sure, 27,000 might raise some eyebrows, but let me tell you, you're not going to find this on any other trailer at this price. If you can find a better deal out there, I might just have to buy you a drink. Drew, I just watched your video comparing another competitor's trailer to the hiker trailer. We get that a lot. Part of it is we've been building trailers for 14 years. The other is we have more than 3,500 satisfied customers out there who own hiker trailers. In your video, you throw out a challenge to find a comparable lower price trailer. I believe we have that, so I've asked my team to do a comparison. Let's take a look at those results. Okay, Bob's let us loose. We've got this challenge ahead of us and we're actually gonna have to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Yeah, I think it's gonna be fun. How do you think that we should do this? You know, we're gonna have to delve into this and really do our research. This isn't gonna be as easy as shopping at the grocery store, seeing everything side-by-side. -side. We're gonna have to dig into the standard options and really compare what comes with what and what it's gonna cost. Yeah, I definitely think there was opportunities for confusion in that video because we were talking about the AT model pricing um, that was what was being compared to the hiker but the video they were showcasing the XT model which has a lot more to it from my quick research so why don't you go through the video and pick apart the differences between the two models I'll do two 5x9 XL builds while you put together the Boreas data and then we'll compare those models side by side at the end Let's go off and do this separately. I don't want to get spoiled by what you're finding and vice versa. So cool. you go do your builds, I'll do mine, and then we'll compare notes. All right, sounds good. All right, so here's my plan. I think I'm going to go set up in the showroom. I'm going to take every single included item I can find on their website, put it in a spreadsheet, and then we'll see what Robbie can come up with on the hikers. So I think I know what Jordan's gonna have to do since they don't have a build tool on their website. Luckily, we have our current hiker trailers order form on our quote page, but I'm actually gonna give you guys an exclusive preview of our brand new Adventure Hub build tool coming soon to hikertrailers.com. Okay guys, so I've got Boreas's website pulled up here. I'm not seeing a builder, so I think what I'm gonna have to do is take all of these included features that I am seeing for the AT and XT models and compile them all together on a spreadsheet so the way I can do a comparison of both of those models side by side. Um, there are quite a bit of them, so it's probably gonna take me a little bit to do. I'm gonna start crunching the numbers, put that data in that spreadsheet, and I'll get back with you guys. So we've set up here in our brand new Becker Supply Company area. You can see some of the printing equipment behind me. There's some pretty cool stuff coming very soon. Uh, if you're interested, you can check out beckersupplyco.com. But we're gonna go ahead and go through uh, a comparison of our online build tools. Everybody should be familiar with this uh, build form that we currently have. You can select your size and model. Again, we're gonna do a five by nine XL because it's the closest comparison. It's a decent way to see pricing, decent way to see all the options that you might want. But as an exclusive preview, we're gonna go through our brand new Adventure Hub Trailer Builder. This will be an update coming soon to hikertrailers.com. But in our new builder, we're gonna go ahead and name a build. We're gonna call it Comparison. And then we're gonna go through item by item in this brand new Adventure Hub Builder and build out two comparable XL models 
to compare versus the AT and the XT. The nice thing about our new Adventure Hub Builder is you can save up to five different builds. So as you can see, we update options. Every option has a photo, every option has a price. One of the other really great features of our new Adventure Hub Builder is we have a lot of logic built in, so you know exactly what you need to select to enable certain options, like bunk beds or a rooftop air conditioner. So this is just a quick preview of some of the interesting things coming very soon to hikertrailers.com with our website update. I'm gonna go ahead and spend a few minutes going through building out our two test trailers, that way we can compare them directly with the AT and the XT model. Okay, so I took a few minutes here, did a couple builds to compare with the AT and the XT model. Why don't we meet back up with Jordan and actually compare all these trailers side by side and see what the pricing comes out to. Okay, well, that was definitely a little more interesting than I expected. You know, I think we got some really interesting data actually doing a side by side comparison. What did you find on the Boreas side of things? I. Uh was very surprised at how much legwork I had to put in. Definitely took me a while to break these down on a spreadsheet because I didn't have a builder to access. Definitely looked at uh, and broke down the differences between their AT and XT model. Um, the XT seems to be a little bit more equipped. Um, and price point comes with it. Um, starting with the AT though, looking at the 27,900 price tag, I feel like for that price, I definitely got a lot of included items. Um, some basic power, Decent size AGM battery, DC to DC charging, lighting, all the all the basic stuff that I would have expected for a price point in that range. So that's kind of what it looks like on paper, but let's actually compare it to the hiker that I built. So the 5x9XL, I ended up having to add 14 additional items to do a side-by-side one-for-one matchup against the AT model. Um, I had to add an in reality, $6,552 worth of options. Um, but that only brings me out to $17,251. So I'm $10,000 less than the AT, and I can offer almost every single option that they offer as standard on a hiker. $17,251, so what, we're looking at a price difference of like $10,500-ish? That's impressive. And we're gonna publish all this data on the website, so if you wanna see our numbers or check our analysis, use the link in the description so that you can compare this data for yourself. I'm really interested to see what the difference in the XT is because we're definitely gonna to have to throw a lot more on the hiker to match what's standard on the XT. So walk me through the XT, and then I'll walk you through my hiker build for that. Yeah, so looking at the XT compared to the AT model, you know, you are getting some upgraded features such as starting with the battery, for example, you're moving to a lithium instead of an AGM battery and it's a heated battery too. But then you're jumping into differences of now you've got a 100 watt ZAMP solar panel, uh, instant hot water shower, Propex heater, stove top, a sink, a Truma C60 with a slide for a refrigerator, and then a 30 gallon water tank and propane to be able to cook and heat water and things. The XT model, with it being a little bit more equipped, price point wise, came in at $44,990. Yeah, I saw that going through our build, you know, to really get us the most comparable side-by-side -side comparison, I did add a couple things. Um, you know, I even added a mattress, which we don't usually sell, but I added the most popular one our customers use, a six inch milliard trifold mattress. Um, I added our full shower system. I added the Truma C60 with fridge slide, which by the way, does not fit in our current fridge box, but we'll talk about fridge boxes very soon. Um, and, you know, added the heater, added the cooking stove that we can sell a la carte, just to try to get to that $44,000 price. 
From our standard build, we now have 22 additional add-ons. Uh, the add-ons total 13536 which is a very well-equipped trailer. Yes. And the total budget for that is 24235 24235 compared to the 44990 So we're looking at a price difference of about 20700 It's almost double. There are some things that we have hopefully pointed out in the video that they do that we do differently and vice versa. Um, I even added one of the Milliard mattresses. Since okay. they provide a mattress, that's the most popular ones our customers order. Right. So I'm trying to make this as fair as possible um, in our analysis, but I'm still, you know, $20,000 under budget when we compare it side by side. So again, after looking at everything, you know, there were a couple key differences. Um, I have to admit that parking brake that they had and offered is pretty cool. You know, that's probably something worth looking into at some point in our R&D process. There are features out there that we may not offer yet, but feedback is the most important thing to us. So please leave your comments below on things that you may like to see us try in the future so that way we can offer them to you. You know, there's been a lot of confusion in the industry uh, about the type of construction materials people use for trailers. I think you actually sat down with Bob to discuss that. I did. Um, Bob is a very knowledgeable person and he's been in the industry of materials for a long time. So I wanted an expert's opinion on this. So why don't we cut over and see what he had to say about that topic. I think there's a focus on composite versus wood construction in the teardrop industry because most companies do one or the other. Obviously building with wood, it's a renewable product it's got a much softer feel. It's the most commonly used production material in the world. It also happens to be one of the most affordable. I believe some of the original composite trailers exist because people did not know or have the construction techniques to assemble wooden trailers to prevent any water or weather issues. Our experience in how we build these trailers has eliminated that problem. When you talk about a composite, what composite are you talking about? There are at least 12 different composite materials right now that people are actively using in the RV industry. Any consumer who is considering a composite trailer, you need to understand the cost of the composite, the ability to make changes or modifications or to repair it, as well as the type of the material. Um, one of the things that we've found as we look into it, and we've asked these manufacturers who sell these products, what about off-gassing? Most don't have the answers. From our perspective, off-gassing is something we need to know more about before we choose a composite panel to use in any of our construction of our products. So wood continues to be by far the most economical product to use. It's also important that if you do it well, it works fantastic. I've seen one of the original trailers that Hiker has produced 12 years ago. I saw it this last summer. It looks great. Customer has no issues. So wood can be a great construction material. You have to have the right techniques and manufacturing methods to provide a great long lasting off-road capable teardrop trailer. Wood also has some advantages and it's much easier to modify than some of the composites. Most people and owners have experience with wood, whether it's on their decks, their houses, whatever. Our customers can do some modifications on their own because we use wood. If we had composite, they would not have any way to add, modify that composite without finding a source to do it for them and the complexion of joinery that isn't as easy as it is with wood. Which material is better for building a trailer? I can't answer that. I think the fact that we do wood and we will continue to do wood is a good thing. We have looked and continue to look at composites. Hiker at this point continues to use some wood in the construction of our trailers, but the techniques we apply to the joinery, to the seam sealing, we have eliminated the concerns that customers have with other manufacturers' trailers about water or rot. So as a consumer, you will pay more for composite, you will have some limitations on future modifications, 
And there may be some environmental concerns that we don't fully understand yet. Well, guys, thank you for tuning into this video. I know it was a little bit different style than what we've done in the past, but I definitely think it was fun. Yeah, it was a very eye-opening exercise. And, you know, if you'd like to see us do this to maybe a couple more competitors or other trailers that are out in the market, liking and subscribing, commenting, that's really what tells us what you guys would like to see more of on this channel. Um, you know, we're dedicated to provide honest and open information as much as we can. So please let us know what you'd like to see next. And hopefully we'll see you either at one of our showrooms or at one of our special events like our Eclipse Open House coming up in April um, or at one of the various trade shows that we're traveling to around the country. So thanks for watching. Again, like and subscribe. We'll see you soon. And Drew, I think we've met your challenge, so I look forward to that drink. Thank you.